Hi everyone and welcome to a rather special edition of In the Fox's Den and as you can see from uh, the screen behind me um, this is uh, about Star Trek and this is a brand new book on the philosophies of Gene Roddenberry who created Star Trek and would have been a hundred years old this year. So uh, let's talk to the authors uh, both from America who have written this book, The Tower of Trek, uh, and introduce Jim Lambert and Troy Lambert. Hi, Troy. Hi, Jim. Um, welcome to In the Fox's Den. Um, I've just had uh, recently had Dean Friedman, who was the first American on this, and now I'm following up with two more Americans. I think my, um, my viewers are going to start thinking I'm only doing about Americans this year, but that may be the way that... <laughs> that it works out so guys we're here to talk about this great book the tower of trek and um first of all um your jim lambert and troy lambert but i think we better explain to the viewers that you're not actually related yes we are, we are not related um jim and i met in a writer's group uh probably in 2013 something around that point um and we were going around introducing ourselves and he introduced himself and I looked down like, what, Jim, what? And so we checked uh, and we discovered we are not related. We thoroughly checked our backgrounds, we're not related. We do have people in our families that have the same names, but they are not the same people. Uh, we have been married, but not to each other. <laughs> 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 and uh, and uh, yeah, we've just been we've been friends ever since. Um, yeah. uh, it, it's been really fun. Well, I, I've been speaking to our um, our merchandising guy, who you know that we've been in contact with, and he's based in the East Kilbride in Scotland. And he was very excited that your surnames were both Lambert, because that's a bit of a Scottish surname. Yeah. So um, I think he's looking now to see whether you're both related to him. So. That's, an, that's another story for another day. So let's um, let's talk about this book because um, it's come about because uh, this year, I believe, would have been Gene Roddenberry's uh, 100th birthday, or certainly last year or this year would have last been. Year. Last year. And this is being done very much in his honour because he had a he had a real vision. Um, about the way that he wanted this to be. And this is the philosophy that I believe comes over in the book. So explain why you've called it the Tower of Trek and how this differs to other Star Trek books. Well, when Troy came to me and said, you know, who do you know that's interested in Star Trek? Of course, I raised my hand and went, well, me. <laughs> uh, then we had to come up with some kind of theme. And I always... Whenever I talk Star Trek with someone, even I go for a walk with my mom most days. And when I mention Star Trek, she immediately brought up, uh, let this be your last battlefield where the two uh, aliens have the black and white on their face and they're reversed. And that is the major cultural uh, war going on. They're trying to exterminate the other race that has the black on the other side. And it just struck me that those kind of things, that and uh, Devil in the Dark with the Horda that is defending her eggs and everyone's trying to kill her just because she's an alien. And it just struck me that these kind of themes were brought up from the very beginning. It's always been about cultural, uh, cultural battles that uh, people are trying to fight uh, against sexism, racism, poverty. And that just seemed like a great touchstone to start from. And of course, that sort of thing is the Tao, is how you live your life, what, what's important in life. So we kind of went with that. Uh, Troy was a great help with that, kind of defining Taoism and bringing in all those kind of elements. Because I think that there is a, this spiritual element to it, and that's why uh, I think you've called it the, the the Tower of Trek, because there are some Trekkies now and Trekkers, and you're going to have to explain to me the difference between the two. 
um, which is going to be my next question. But they actually follow this tower as a, 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 in a kind of religious way, don't they? Since the so, since the first series. Well, yeah. So so to kind of talk to that part of it, um, you know, Roddenberry was very much about attempting to make Star Trek as a religious as possible. That we were in a post-religious society. But that doesn't really work when we really examine and look at it, because what it is, is we've replaced what we would call traditional religion with something else. But it's still a broader philosophy that acknowledges that there are things in the universe that we simply don't understand, probably never will understand. And really part of the, the, the principles of Taoism and Buddhism is accepting that there are things that we cannot know. And that that's perfectly okay. And that within that, we need to accept the diversity that, that naturally occurs within that. Because we don't know, we can't know if that person is right or wrong. I love Jim's example of Devil in the Dark. Because once you understand the motivations of that creature, it's no longer an evil creature. It's just a mother protecting her young. And so... It, it's, it illustrates a philosophy of you cannot dismiss what you don't understand as evil without embracing that the fact that there are diverse cultures, there are diverse peoples, there are diverse viewpoints, and we really need to start from a point of discussion and understanding rather than animosity. Um, and that's really a big part of what this philosophy is all about. And it's been a big part of the storylines for every series, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Mirroring society and lessons that society should learn. And that very much comes over in the book. Um, what I do want to ask, and I mentioned it just now, please tell me the difference between a Trekkie and a Trekker. <laughs> I got introduced to that a long time ago. Uh, I did some reading and refreshed my memory on that. Basically, everyone started calling themselves Trekkies in the beginning. And then the serious fans who thought looked down on people who were just dilettantes and just getting into the series and they only watched the episodes that didn't analyze it. They were Trekkers. Trekkies sound like fanboys. <laughs> yeah. It was it was the silliest thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I'm guessing this really shows up at the conventions, doesn't it? It's kind of died away over time. Uh, it's not yeah. as big a deal. <laughs> yeah, not as much anymore. It used to be a big deal, though. I mean, I, I had an uncle who was, and he was very clear about the fact that he was a Trekkie, not a Trekker, in that he did, he wrote fan fiction. He loved all the episodes and stuff like that, but he was not a deep analytical thinker about it. I mean, by, by that old definition, by, by the very act of writing this book, Jim and I would probably be defined as Trekkers, but I would not define myself as a Trekker. I would not self-identify as a Trekker. So maybe that's a part of the diversity that we're talking about. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> we're taking this book to the conventions, so we'll see whether that holds up, Troy, um, and see what people think of you when you're standing there signing copies. We we'll, we'll um, need badges, Trekker and Trekkie. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on a personal basis, what I'm going to ask you, you both separately, what does Star Trek mean to you and which has been your favourite series and favourite characters? Jim, let's start with you. Okay, so uh, you're probably familiar with Doctor Who, another... Uh, yeah. Another big British import for me. Uh, there's a saying, you never forget your first doctor. And that's how it is with me in Star Trek. I fell in love with the original series with Kirk and Spock and McCoy and Sulu and all of them when I was a kid. I mean, it was in syndication and I was 10. So... It, it, that's that's been my favorite that's my touchstone to go back to i i adore some of the new stuff i got a chance to watch some of the discovery i don't happen to have the uh the channel that it's that it's uh streaming on 
and I watched a few of the episodes and was just knocked out by the uh, the production values. They were so good. It looked like movies every time. It was amazing. But I still go back to Star Trek, the original series, and go, ah, oh, gee. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I think my wife's with you on that one as well, Jim. How about you, Troy? <laughs> Uh, well, so I am, I'm one of these very weird people in that, um, I love, uh, the original series. Um, probably next generation is still my favorite though. Um, I, and I'm like Jim, like I watched, um, the original series in syndication. I was probably somewhere between eight and 10 when I first started watching it. Um, and I would watch it at the babysitter's at my babysitter's house. My mom would sometimes pick me up early and I would miss the end of the episode and I would be devastated like, oh, my, what happened? You know, um, and so I really cut my teeth on the original series. But the next generation, um, Picard really became kind of like my my favorite captain. Um, and I really felt like he did an excellent like the whole series was excellent about the leadership and the way that the world worked. You know, I thought it was really excellent. However, I really do like a lot of the new Trek. And I I will say this, and you might get comments about this. People might argue with me. But I think that Lower Decks, which is the new animated Star Trek series, I think it's the most Star Trek of the new series that are currently streaming. Now, we'll see if Strange New Worlds, what that does. Um, But I think Lower Decks is the most true to the original philosophy of the ones that are now streaming. And I think a close second is Prodigy, which is the one that's made um, in conjunction with Nickelodeon for kids. Um, I think they're both really, really excellent. Well, I've been looking at some of the uh, the Facebook platforms. There's lots of Facebook platforms for um, for Star Trek uh, and Trekkies and Trekkers. Um, and um, That's what's great about this is there is so much debate about what people think is the best. Some of it is to do with the age group that they are, but that's great as well, because it means that there's there's young there's youngsters that are new Trekkies and new Trekkers that um, maybe weren't around for that first series, but then get to see the first series. And Jim, you alluded to the fact that you know they just didn't have the technology around them but those original storylines still hold strong even yeah. even if um, even if some of the backgrounds and e- even if some of those boulders look uh, look like they're a little bit too light to be boulders <laughs> um the storylines are really really strong and i think um they still hold up and we st- we still watch them today my wife and i so um so I'm sure we're not alone in, in that. So um, coming back to the book, um, Troy, do you want to tell us uh, uh, when it's out? I mean, obviously, we're going to put all of the um, the links for people to buy this book um, underneath this interview. But uh, if you can say as well how people can get hold of this book, it's already out digitally, I know. Um, but also the launch date for, for the hard copy. So, so the hard copies are actually sort of out now. It's just taking people time to get them. Um, and and that's, a, that's related to publishing the way it is right now and printing the way it is right now, um, unfortunately. So we do have some print versions coming. And um, so the official release date, release date of that is actually April 5th. But we already have, there's already some of them in the world, in, in the wild and in the world around us. And um, we will actually have some, by then, we will actually have some physical copies. So the physical copies are around, if you want signed copies, you can get those through our website, which is um, taooftrek.org. That link will be down below because it's got some hyphens in there or whatever. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we've got, that's where you can get signed copies. You can order physical copies direct from the publisher at Mooney and Lambert, or you can order them on Amazon. Um, yeah, you can order them on Amazon. So Okay, and, and we're going to be taking uh, these books to the conventions um, in as many territories as we possibly can. Um, and if anybody else wants to, um, wants, to, wants to help us with that, 
buy consignment and take them to the conventions in your area that we can't get to, then please contact me and I'll put my uh, email address at the, at the bottom of the screen. Because this really is a very different book in that it really is about the philosophy that Gene Roddenberry and the vision that Gene Roddenberry had right at the very beginning and how that's gone through every series and how that affects everybody that, that now watches it. And, um, and so I think that, that this is a book that every Trekkie and Trek, I have to say both every time, <laughs> um, but that they should own because it's very different from anything they've had before because it's, it's a fan's book for fans. And so you've really captured the understanding of the, of the people that have followed it for years. I think we yeah. should um, uh, finish this interview off by um, first of all saying that this is being recorded on March the 23rd. So we're all going to wish a belated 91st birthday to, uh, to William Shatner whose birthday was yesterday. So that's that's great timing. And um, it's unbelievable really that uh, he's only nine years younger than Gene Roddenberry would have been. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't uh, didn't know that. Oh. He's still going strong. And now he's actually been boldly where nobody's gone before. So um, so he's a, he's a great hero. Thank you to both of you. Um, Everybody should be really looking forward to reading this book and all the links that you need will be at the bottom of this interview. Jim, Troy, thank you very much. And we'll see you again soon. Yep, thank thanks you. for having us. Take care. Well, I'm sure all you Trekkies and Trekkers can't wait to get hold of a copy of this book. The digital version is already out and it doesn't sound like the physical copy is far away. So all the links to buy the book uh, are underneath this interview and um, you can pick them up on Amazon directly from the publisher, uh, other book outlets, and of course, at the many conventions that there are uh, around, the, around the world because uh, Star Trek is so popular. This book, as I said, is really about the philosophies of Gene Roddenberry and um, and what he really wanted to portray in this series. And it's been carried on by other writers um, throughout the years. And um, it's a real reflection, I think, of our society, but also there's lessons to be learned by our society in there. And, um, and uh, as I say, Jim and Troy both alluded to them. So um, please buy the book. Um, it really is a, a very different book to the other Star Trek, uh, other Star Trek books. I'm sure you will already have, and um, come along to the conventions and 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 meet these guys because they're going to try and get to as many of them as they possibly can. Uh, also, please subscribe to uh, the uh, Agent Fox Media channel in the Fox's Den, our YouTube channel, and this, of course, is a book that is co-published by Mooney and Lambert and by Agent Fox Media. So all that remains for me to say is live long and prosper. <laughs>